Hi, Judy from Witch Peace Craft. Welcome to today's video, the week that was my yarn catch up for the week. It's Sunday the 12th of June, which happens to be International Knit in Public Day. So I hope some people got out there and knit in public on the 12th of June and promote Fibre Art. Unfortunately for me, I couldn't do that. Sunday, this weekend, and especially Sunday, is the big Cairns Ironman competition, which is a worldwide event, and we do get a lot of visitors. Um, I believe it brings about $3 million, in, uh, $3 million tourist dollars into our area over the weekend. And where I live in Holloway, the access road to the highway is blocked off on Sundays for a couple of hours while all the cyclists go past. So um, they let you know in like weeks ahead. You can leave on Saturday and come back late on Sunday, you know, go and stay with friends or something. But we didn't. We decided we would stick around and do some gardening and enjoy a home. Um, it is quite cool here. It got um, down to at least 16 degrees last night, 16 Celsius, which to some people in the Northern Hemisphere they go, that's not cold. Well, it is if you live in the tropics. Hence, it's going to get colder tonight and I have broken out my campfire carding in I made last year, year before. It's still way too big. <laughs> um, I made it way too big. My first real wearable I made. Huh. But anyway, it's nice and snuggly for these cold nights. What have I been up to? Well, I don't have a lot to show you. I have one finished object. It was a very busy work week with some major stressful things happening, but they're all sorted. One more week to go and this big 50th celebration event will be done and dusted and I will have a big glass of wine and I don't really drink much when it's finished. <laughs> anyway, my one finished object is for Charm Granny's calendar cowl on her, in her Facebook group. She's been showing the calendar. I didn't do the last two months. They were like crocheted flowers. Um, difficult for me to work them into something I wanted to do. I did try, but I'm just not great at making those sort of linking flowers. Anyway, this one is a blanket made with little tiny granny squares and she does let you make other projects using that technique um, not coasters because like they're just individual squares you have to make a few squares and I put my thinking cap on and I found a tutorial for a granny square tea cozy and I have made it and here it is it uses 12 little granny squares six on the front and six on the back it is a tutorial by another Australian podcaster, Wow Designs, Wow Crochet, something like that. It's a three-part tutorial, an ideal for beginners if you want to make a tea cozy. So don't forget, all the links will be in the description below so you can check it out. The only difference is hers finishes around the knob like that. But I was watching Queen's Palace Jubilee Party and I decided... To give the knob a little crown there you go my calendar cow for charm granny for a granny square tea cozy um i used spotlight four seasons marvel is the lavender color and the pink the darker purple is left over from a fiddlestick superb eight yarn all scrap yarn great way to use some scraps up for a project so that is my one finished object. The other thing that was different with this particular tea cozy is she doesn't sew them there. She put a but she gets you to put buttons on and it use the square to link them. So you've got a little button each side, which makes it easy to take on and off when you're filling your pot with tea. So there you go. My granny square tea cozy. I actually quite like it. I at the time I thought, because mm, I'm not a Granny Square fan, but I actually do like the way this turned out. Your squares can be as creative as you, as, you, as you want, or you can watch and follow the tutorial and use the same sort of colour combo. I use different. I just use whatever scraps I had. Um, I have been working on other projects. I have some big projects on the go. 
it was just a really busy week, too busy to do much crafting. However, thank you to all my subscribers who voted on which baby blanket project I should start next. It was very close, how, but there is one clear winner now and I have started the project. The winner of um, the most chosen was Sweet Tear Baby Blanket by Karen Wright from Building Blessings. This is a paid for pattern and I have now started it. Um, I have made it before. It is really easy to make if you're a beginner. I actually can sit and watch television and do this as long as every, so, like every sort of stripe I check my stitch count to make sure I'm on track. Um, she made it in apple green, a lavender and hot pink. She's made it in um, like a, a grey, blue and green. And she made it in a, I think from the picture, it looks like grey, red and a bit of lavender. But there you go. The colour combination of mine, well, you have to wait till you see my finished project. But I'm quite pleased with it and the fact that I am using up some of my baby yarn stock so thank you once again there were nine votes for that there were seven votes for the petal stitch blanket and five votes for the michelle blanket you never know i may make one of the others when i finish this one but it was great to read everybody's feedback why they liked a particular pattern like i said i haven't really been doing much and the weather is a lot cooler and I went out in the garden, did a bit of gardening, and then I sat out in the sun and did some knitting. Um, I also took some video of one part of my garden, which I will put at the end of this if you want to stick around and watch it and see what part of my garden looks like. We live on a quarter of an acre, and our block is shaped like a tri triangle, with the point being that way, two long sides, and the flat bit that way. And I have taken video of the right side. Um, I probably should, I need more flowers for pollinators, but I hope you enjoy it. You might see Saxon ducking in and out. He's chasing little lizards. He never catches any. He chases birds too, but he won't catch those either. Because on his collar are two metal tags that make a jingling noise to scare them off. But he has fun looking. Anyway. Um, it's his thing. He's got to hunt the lizards when we're out in the garden. Um, I think if he caught one and ate it, he'd be quite sick, but he won't catch one. So guys, that's it for me for this week. It's been, like I said, hectic with work and family life, so I haven't really got a lot to show you. But I hope you have enjoyed what you have seen. So till next time, stay safe, stay well, and remember to have a crafty day someday when you can fit it in like me bye for now okay this is going to be a video of the right side of my garden when you come through the gate this is on the right but i'm starting almost at the top uh, working my way down beyond this point to my left and um, we've had a big tree removed and things got his mulcher and everything there and it's a bit of a mess but we have palms i pruned in there recently to let some sunlight in to help some of the lower ground flowers that other stalky thing behind the tree trunk is a hibiscus that shouldn't even be flowering or have leaves at the moment it's really weird and the reason for this side is my snowdrop don't know the real name is flowering and it always looks beautiful it's getting a little top heavy so when it um, finishes flowering I'll have to prune that right back so it doesn't fall over and yes, lots of green in a tropical garden. This is an old tree stump behind there that now has all sorts of things growing on it, such as um, I think there is actually um, some, I forgot what they call it, a small staghorn down there, plus ground cover, plus ferns, plus a fig in front of it. And on top of it is my um, cactus nursery. I'll show you a bigger one of those. Um, it's taken a few years to grow in another video and we come to my red dragon fruit growing up the palm um, and my pineapple patch I've had 
Oh, and there goes Saxon. We have a native bush turkey making a noise and he wants it. He won't catch it. They're too fast. Um, that's a red flesh dragon fruit and it has given me fruit two years. Quite decent sized fruit. And below is my famous pineapple patch. Um, I will get anywhere from 10 to 15 pieces of uh, um, pineapples for Christmas. I end up giving them away sometimes because there's too many for us. This is a plant that is what I call my nursery plant. I take cuttings off this and grow them. I am currently screening one of my other neighbours out because she tends to look through the windows and it is starting to freak Reeves out. Um, he feels it's an invasion of privacy. So more um, pineapples. This, I've got to find something to put back there now. Um, I did have some old pineapples that I've pulled out. Um, I don't think I'll put more in, get too many now. This is a palm tree with a passion fruit vine climbing up it. The beauty of a palm trees that are straight, you can use them as trellises for different things. This was given to me, this pink flowering plant, by the old couple where I used to work at the Bowls Club. She gave me some cuttings. All I know is it's called donkey ears and it gets these lovely flowers. There's a few of them around. I call this one Margaret, after Margaret who gave it to me, and the other I call John because that was her husband. Lovely old couple who have since passed over. There you go. I have yuccas that I have grown from babies and in the back. I don't have a lot of flowers. I'm trying to put some more pollinating flowers in, trying to attract more bees because I want to grow more fruit and veg. Um, those orange ones. Orange my favourite colour. I will remember the name one day. And I grow ponytail palms from babies. This one's just flowered. That um, flowering stalk's quite heavy and it is leaning over towards the neighbours which have little kids. So I get thing to get a ladder and cut that down so it doesn't fall on one of the kids. Um, this was a pot that someone gave me. It had these this plant in it. It was pot bound when they moved house, and I split it all up. And they are everywhere in my garden. And when they flower like this, this one's flowering, they attract the lorikeets. I have an old video with lorikeets feeding off the flowers going right off at me because I wouldn't go away while they were feeding. Beautiful pink, uh, red, yeah, uh, green and blue lorikeets. If they come this year I'll get another photo or a quick video. Um, I'm not always home when they're here. More yuccas, more type, different types of palms. And yes, that is a plant one there at the back near the fence. I stole a cutting from the beach. It has lovely little white flowers. It's growing. Um, yes, it grows on the verge of the beach and I took a cutting. Very naughty of me. More pineapples and flowering yellowy things down there. I don't know what they're called but they were here when we got here at the fence. This is the new fence that Reeves did last year. It's awesome. He did it all by himself. This is an old Melaleuca stump and I put a cutting from a native orchid on there and it has taken and it has given me flowers. So if it flowers again, I'll take some photos, but it is doing well. They like to be in full sun, out of the water. And yes, we're a bit housebound today because the Cairns Iron Man is on. Our suburb, um, you have to go out and access road to the highway and that will be closed for a couple of hours while all the bike riders go past. We're warned well in advance and it's a national, it's a worldwide event. It brings about three million to the area in, in tourism, three million dollars, so you can't complain. This little plant here I bought from an old guy at my markets. Um, he's very friendly but was having a tough day one day and that's my stupid neighbour on his motorbike. Um, he was having a tough day, he wasn't making a lot of sales. There are a lot of plant stalls at our market so I bought that one off him 
and put a smile on his face. I quite liked her, I didn't buy it just for that. It's got um, pink and creamy foliage, so that'll add some colour to my garden. Thing did say it's a little young. I should, probably should have picked something bigger, but it is doing okay. I'll put more along there. That's where it's made access to the fence when he was doing it. So we pulled a lot of old ferns and things out. Here, this is what you call, this bush is a mock orange. If you suffer from hay fever, you will hate this bush when it flowers. With all the rain, it's gone a little rampant. I will trim that right down. So I'll get a few flowers, but I won't drive everybody nuts that's got hay fever. It's very perfumed. Um, this, the stuff here from when we bought the house, because it was established, this is some bulrushes I put in. Um, they have purpley leaves, it was to put some colour into all this green. They grow prolific after the rains, I have to, when those rushes start to die off I'll prune that back, but they um, make a nice touch there and there's a bit of an access behind it if we need to get to the fence. This was here when we got here, I have no idea what it is, but it does grow lovely and it's a lighter green. I'm all about colour. This was here, this ground cover, it's green with purple under the leaves. I'm not a huge fan, but I've, and I've pulled a lot of this out, but I've left some in for the colour. And we had to clear this area up. Um, I'll explain in a reason why. I've got a um, aloe vera plant growing there that I might pot and give to someone. I've got a lot of aloe vera the other side. I've put in some desert roses those spindly things that one that's pink one that's a white one and that's another pink one um, can't grow your traditional English rose well could try but they really struggle they're not great and um, so I grow desert roses and when they're flowering I've taken photos in the past they are really beautiful and they um, feed my need for roses. My mother used to grow roses and my dad, or my dad grew them, grew them for my mum. That is my night jasmine. When that flowers, just on dusk, you come out and hose the flowers and a beautiful perfume drifts into my bedroom across the driveway and it doesn't tend to irritate people's hay fever. The reason we cleared is the water meter. The water meter is here and the council need clear access to read it so they can charge us for water. And when we moved in, it was very overgrown and we got a little letter from them. I'm thinking I'll put some more ground covers in this end along the edge just to give it some colour, maybe something that flowers. I need more flowers. Anyway, guys, that is the right-hand side of my garden to the gate wall. Hope you've enjoyed that. It's a lot of palms. We've actually removed, since moving in and buying this place, 30 palms. The lady who had it and built the house was Austrian and she filled the place with palms. I don't think she was aware of how big they can grow and how dangerous they can be in a cyclone. So we're keeping some, but we're slowly getting rid of some um, because it's about $1,000 to remove one palm. Okay. Until next time, I'll have gardening time with you. Get out the sun and enjoy a little garden, even if it's just a few pot plants on your uh, balcony or veranda. Bye for now.